All right, you guys, welcome back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. My name is Eddie Watson, and my goal is to give you guys the confidence to succeed in the ICU by making these complex critical care subjects easy to understand. I truly hope that I'm able to do just that, and if I am, I do invite you to subscribe to the channel down below. When you do, make sure you hit that bell icon and select all notifications so you never miss out when I release a new lesson. All right, in the last lesson, we looked at a couple x-rays pretty quickly that kind of showed us the location of our PA catheter. Um, as I mentioned in that lesson, I would put together a little bit more in-depth lesson on that topic. So um, I did want to go over a little more information about what you're looking at on the x-ray and to show some more examples along with some abnormalities that you might come across. All right, in order to begin, we really have to start off talking about the anatomy that's going to be relevant on our chest x-ray. So for most patients in the ICU, we're going to be getting that anterior, posterior chest x-ray. And on this x-ray, there's two main anatomical elements that we're going to need to identify and know their relation to one another. So first we have the airways, and then we have the pulmonary arteries. So to start out, let's take a look at a normal x-ray and then identify some of the anatomy and the landmarks on here. So first, let's start off talking about our airways. And first, we're going to want to identify the trachea, which is the large descending portion that we have here. Next, from the trachea, we know that we have the branches to the right main stem and the left main stem. And then where these branch, this is where we can identify the carina. Now, you'll notice here that that right main stem is short and more vertical, while the left main stem has a longer, more horizontal path. And this is why endotracheal tubes that are inserted too far often end up in the right main, as well as most aspiration pneumonia happens in the right lung. Now, almost immediately after branching into the right main stem, we actually have the first branch coming off here, which is going to the right upper lobe bronchus. And then continuing along the right, then we go into what we call the bronchus intermedius, which later branches into the middle lobe and the lower lobe bronchus. Um, which typically aren't seen on a chest radiograph. Now for the left main stem, eventually this branches, but again, this isn't something that we typically see on x-ray. All right, so now let's talk about the relevant cardiovascular anatomy real quick here. So first off, we have our right atrium, which we can see here, um, and this forms part of the cardiac contour that we have on the patient's right. Now coming into the right atrium, we have the superior vena cava here and the inferior vena cava is here. And then next from there, we have our right ventricle, which would be located right about here. Now this is just where it's positioned, um, but it actually doesn't form any cardiac contours on the frontal x-ray. Now coming out from the right ventricle, we have the pulmonary artery. And so the main pulmonary artery really is short and large, and it quickly divides into the right and the left pulmonary arteries. Now the left pulmonary artery travels up and over the left main stem, and then the right pulmonary artery has a pretty horizontal path. And then we have the first branches off each of both the right and the left pulmonary arteries, which are the right upper lobe pulmonary artery and the left upper lobe pulmonary artery. Then they continue on as the right and left interlobar pulmonary arteries. And it is important to keep in mind the relation of the pulmonary arteries compared to the airways. Now the pulmonary arteries are not always seen, um, but the airways are usually much easier to identify in here. So the main pulmonary artery typically begins just below and then ends just above the left main stem. So you can see here is our left main stem here. So our pulmonary artery should begin just below here and then right as it branches, it's gonna be just above it. Now for the left pulmonary artery, that this can be found above the left main stem airway, because if you remember, I said it goes up and over that airway. The right pulmonary artery branches with the right upper lobe pulmonary artery traveling on top of the right upper lobe bronchus, whereas the right interlobar pulmonary artery sits almost directly over the right bronchus intermedius before it eventually moves to be on top of that as well. All right, so now that we have the relevant anatomy out of the way, let's take a look at some x-rays of patients with pulmonary artery catheters. Now remember on these, if you have any questions about the relation to anatomy and the course of the PA catheter, then refer to the first part of this lesson here. All right, so for our first example, here is a basic example of a swan that's going into our patient's right pulmonary artery. 
which you can see if I trace the catheter along here. Now this is a right IJ insertion. Um, it does also appear that this patient has a left IJ line. Um, it looks big, so potentially a HD line or a MAC. Um, but remember that we want to reach the dependent portions of the lung to reach zone 3, and this insertion clearly follows that right interlobar pulmonary artery. That said, this one could potentially be inserted a little too far. We typically don't want to cross over too far here. All right, for example two, in this example, uh, we again have a swan that's going into the patient's right pulmonary artery, which you can see if I trace it along here. Now remember that this is most often where they're going to go, especially when they're inserted right IJ, which again, this is another example of that. And this one is continuing downward towards the dependent portion of the lung. Um, but as you can see, it's not inserted nearly as far as the last one. Uh, this is a little bit more typical of where we expect them to be. All right, so for example three, in this example, if we follow our PA catheter along here, we can see that we're again inserted right IJ and that we're going through the right atrium, through the right ventricle, but this time the tip of the swan is just in the pulmonary artery. Again, we can tell that in relation to that left main stem and where that position is on here. While this isn't necessarily a bad position, it isn't giving us a true zone three representation of our left atrial pressure, as well as this one is a higher risk to get pulled back into the right ventricle. All right, onto another example, example four. Here in this example, this is a pulmonary artery catheter that's actually going into the patient's left pulmonary artery, as you can see by following it along here. Now again, this isn't a bad position, and in this case here, we can tell that it's going downward towards a dependent zone three portion of the pulmonary artery, um, but a lot of times when it just starts to make that, that left branch, like the example that I used in that previous lesson, there may be question on whether that one is actually zone three. Now here in example five, are you able to tell what's going on and what might be a little bit different in this one? Well, hopefully you're able to see that this is actually just a quick example of a left IJ insertion. So if we follow it along here, it does properly terminate in the patient's right pulmonary artery. All right, so example six. So take a look at this one here. There's quite a bit going on in here, so it's not gonna be necessarily the easiest to see. Um, but looking at this x-ray here, do you have any idea what's going on? Well, this example is actually twofold. First, this one is actually inserted femorally, as we can see the approach coming up from the inferior vena cava. That said, if we continue to follow the catheter along, we see that it ends up deep in the right lower lobe pulmonary artery. Now, this is not a good position as we are at risk for being in a continuous wedge, for overwedging, as well as the risk of infarction of the lung, or like I said, if that wedge balloon is inflated, we could damage or rupture those smaller vessels, which could be a life-threatening situation. All right, so example seven, in this example here, the thing that I wanted to point out is if we track our catheter down along here, and as it comes and terminates over here, that based on this x-ray, I would be questioning whether this has followed along that right upper load pulmonary artery instead of going down towards the dependent portion. If that's the case, then we are not in a zone three. All right, so now here in example eight, take a look at this and see if you can identify what the problem is here. So in this example here, we actually have a subclavian approach. The problem is that this one, they ended up putting in the subclavian artery, and therefore, if we follow the path of this, instead of coming down along the patient's right side, which is where our vena cavas typically are, we cross over the midline and end up going down what is the patient's aorta. All right, so now example nine, um, take a look at this one here and see if you can see what's happening with this one. This one's actually a pretty interesting one. Are you able to see the problem here? Well, hopefully so. So if we actually track along, we see that it's inserted right IJ and it works its way down and it appears to be coiled in the patient's right atrium. Now, in cases of this here, this would need to be pulled back and refloated. Now for our last example, example 10, this is another interesting one here. Um, this one isn't quite as obvious unless you've seen it before, but can you see what the issue might be here? Well, 
if we think of that previous x-ray where we had things coiled together, one thing that we're at risk for when that happens is something that we call knotting. And this is where literally a knot gets formed in the pulmonary artery catheter. And this is going to be a problem because one, our catheter isn't going to be working like it's supposed to. And then two, when you go to pull that pulmonary artery catheter out, you're not going to be able to get it out the introducer. And this is actually going to require, as you can see here, actually going in and surgically removing the introducer and the pulmonary artery catheter. And this is a perfect picture of what it looks like on x-ray and what it actually looks like. And as you can see, it actually is knotted. All right, so that was our review over pulmonary artery catheters and then checking their position on x-ray. We covered a lot of different examples, so hopefully this will be able to carry with you moving forward and you'll have a better idea when you get an x-ray of your patient, being able to assess and see what's going on with that PA catheter. So I hope that you guys found this information useful. If you did, please leave me a like on the video down below. Uh, it really helps YouTube know to show this video to other people out there, as well as leave me a comment down below. I love reading the comments that you guys leave and I try to respond to as many people as I can. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And a special shout out to the awesome YouTube and Patreon members out there. The support that you're willing to show me and this channel is truly appreciated, so thank you guys so very much. If you'd be interested in showing additional support for this channel, you can find links to both the YouTube and Patreon membership down below. Head on over there and check out some of the perks that you guys get for doing just that, as well as check out some of the links to other nursing gear, as well as some awesome t-shirt designs I have down there as well. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next lesson that I release, otherwise, in the meantime, here's a couple awesome lessons I'm going to link to right here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.